Hello everyone. In the previous video, we discussed the four methods used for representing algorithms by means of natural language, programming language, pseudocode, and using flowcharts. Today our topic is flowchart constructs and examples on flowcharts. In the sequence flowchart constructs, after performing a specific action, we move to the next action. In the decision flowchart constructs, a condition is tested. If the condition is true, a statement or a group of statements are executed. And if the condition is false, another statement or group of statements will be executed. So depending on the condition, only one block of statements will be executed. The main loop constructs are while, do while, and for. In the while loop, a condition is tested. If the condition is true, we perform a group of statements under the while condition and we repeat testing the condition. Whenever the condition is false, we exit the loop. While in the do while construct, a group of statements are executed and at the end a condition is tested. If the condition is true, we repeat executing this group of statements, otherwise we exit the loop. So on the do while construct, this block of statements will be executed at least once. In the switch construct, an expression is evaluated and we switch to one of the cases depending on the value in the switch case. So only one case from these cases will be selected. The four construct can be flowcharted using the basic flowchart symbols. For example, to flowchart this loop, we can assign the initial value to, to i, then we check if i equals 6, we exit the loop, otherwise we print i plus 1. After that, i is incremented and the condition is tested again. However, there are several symbols used for the loop constructs. For example, this symbol starts a repeated block, a for or a while statement. The end of the loop body connects back to the loop symbol. How many times the loop executes depends on what is written inside the loop symbol. In some diagrams, we can encounter a preparation symbol or the loop limit symbol. In addition to the described basic symbols used in most flowcharts, there are several other symbols. For example, this symbol is used for a subroutine. These symbols are used as off-page connectors. This symbol is used for sort. This one for merge, database, internal storage, etc. We move to examples on flowcharts. To calculate profit and loss, we read the income and the cost. After that, we check if the income is greater than or equal to the cost. Then we calculate the profit as income minus cost and we print profit in this case. Otherwise, we calculate a loss as cost minus income and print the loss. Here is a flowchart to find the largest of three numbers, A, B, and C. After reading the numbers, A, B, C, we check if A is greater than B, then again we check if A is greater than C, then A is the largest element, otherwise C is the largest. If A is less than B, we check if B is greater than C. If this condition is true, then B is the largest, otherwise C is the largest. So only one value, the largest, from the input A, B, C will be printed. The next example is to find the average of pairs in natural numbers. We initialize a sum to N, then we add to it N minus 1, N minus 2, etc until we reach zero. We first read the number n. We add n to the sum. If n is not zero, we decrement n and we loop again. So the next n will be added to the sum. This loop is repeated until n becomes zero. In this case, we display the sum over n, which is the average of the first in natural numbers. As an exercise, you can draw the flow chart to find the sum by starting from 1 to n. The next example 
is to find all the roots of a quadratic equation. A quadratic equation is an equation that can be written in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals to zero. Solving this equation means we have to find the values of x such that this equation holds true. Here we have to compute first the discriminant d, which is b squared minus 4ac. And we have three cases. If d equals 0, then we have two equal roots. x1 equals x2 equals minus b over 2a. The second case, if d is greater than 0, then x1, x2 are computed as follows minus b plus minus square root of d over 2a. Really, we can combine these two cases together and use this formula. If d is less than 0, then we have two complex roots, minus b plus minus j square root of minus d over 2a, where g is the complex value minus one. Really here we can obtain the real value r equals minus b over 2a and the complex part c equals square root of the minus d over 2a. In this case x1 equals to r plus jc and x2 equals to r minus jc. In the flow chart, we first read the values a, b, c, then we compute the discriminant d, b squared minus 4 a, c. After that, we check if the discriminant is greater than zero. In this case, x1 equals to minus b plus square root of d over 2a, and x2 equals minus b minus square root of d over 2a. After that, the square roots x1 and x2 can be printed. If d is less than zero, then we compute r as minus b over 2a and c as square root of minus d over 2a. In this case, x1 equals to r plus jc and x2 equals to r minus jc. Here you should note that j is the complex value square root of minus one. So you can print x1 as r plus j and the value of c. And in the same manner, you can print x2. The next example is to calculate the Fibonacci series till term 1000. The Fibonacci series is 1, 1, and every next element is computed by summing the two previous elements. So here we have 2, 1 plus 2, 3, 2 plus 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, etc. The algorithm steps are as follows. We initialize the variables i to 0, j to 1, k to 0, and fib to 0. While i less than n, we perform the following operations. fib equals j plus k, j equals k, k equals fib, and we increment i by 1. So we continue looping until i becomes greater than n. Initially, we have i 0, j 1, k 0, and fib 0. In the first loop, we have fib j plus k, which is 1, j becomes 0, and k 1, and i is incremented by 1. At the next iteration, we'll have here j plus k 1, j 1, k fib 1, and i is incremented by 1. In the next loop, we'll have here j plus k, which is 2, j 1, k 2, and i is incremented by 1. In the next iteration, fib equals j plus k, which is 3, j equals 2, k3, and i4. In the next iteration, we'll have 
pip equals 2 plus 3, 5, j equals k, which is 3, k equals pip, which is 5, and i is incremented by 1, and we continue the same manner, while i is less than 1,000. In the flow chart, we initialize i to 0, j to 1, k to 0, pip to 0. While i is less than 1,000, we output the next term. After that, we modify pip to j plus k, j to k, k to pip, and we increment i. And we loop while i is less than n. We exit the loop when the condition becomes false. From this flowchart, it's very easy to write the program. We'll learn how to find the Fibonacci series using recursion. For today, that's all. Thank you.